Hi everyone, it's Delizia from Delizia Naturally here. I wanted to show you today how I filter the used cooking oil and make it into soap. So I'll um, change the camera angle and just have a close up uh, on what I'm doing and explain as I go. So I have I have prepared a, a piece of muslin. Uh, it's like a really fine calico, um, just over a stainless steel bowl. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peg this um, just on the sides here. So this process will get a little bit messy, but it's uh, worth it in the end. Just had to get a couple more pegs. Better to have too many than not enough with this type of process. So I have, uh, this says olive oil, but it's actually sunflower oil. So all you do is basically just pour it through the cloth. Get it all out. And you can see some of those brown things, they're the impurities, so they will remain on top here. So this waste cooking oil is actually from my auntie's. So I'm using it up and I'm going to make a, um, a batch of soap out of it, which I can show you as well. So this is just doing it like on a small scale in the comfort of your own home. So I need to mention uh, the type of oil. So this is sunflower oil, but I can't guarantee that some olive oil has been put in here. And what I looked at is that olive oil and sunflower oil, when it's to do with soap, have similar properties. So if olive oil and sunflower oil is mixed in your waste cooking oil, the amount of lye and water that is required to make soap is very similar than if I just had plain sunflower oil or plain olive oil. Like so many things in life, it's a patient process. So in summer, this works really well because the oil is a, a hotter temperature. You can see all that gunk at the bottom there, so we're going to filter that out. So those things in the bottom, they're just remnants of food uh, and other things that have kind of come away with the used cooking oil. As long as you filter it out, it's absolutely fine. I'll show you once we've finished this process what the oil looks like underneath the cloth.
So what I like to do now is get a spoon and just move that around. So this is just the, um, you can see that's the solid waste now from the used cooking oil, and I will compost this. We're just going to put it on there, on this paper towel. So it's quite a good filter. So every now and then you can uh, just take a peg off and peek and see what the level is of the oil as it's rising. So one of the things I'd like to mention about filtering this oil, this is sunflower oil and maybe there's a little bit of olive oil combined. But sunflower oil is a polyunsaturated fat. So because of that, that means that there are bonds required to keep the polyunsaturated fat together. It's not a saturated fat and it's not a monounsaturated fat. Uh, so for that reason, I add an antioxidant. So I'll add the vitamin E after this is finished and it's clean enough. I will add this before I make it into soap. If you don't have vitamin E, just use the grapefruit seed extract or some other extract. Even rosemary olea resin extract, ROE, is very good for oxidization in polyunsaturated fats that you use for soap. This is the only soap that I make with polyunsaturated fat. The only reason I make it is because this oil will be going to landfill or down the drain and I don't want that. That's why I filter this oil and use it to make soap. Mostly the soap that I make is from saturated fat being tallow and coconut oil and also macadamia oil and sometimes I use a little bit of almond oil or castor oil. So I've almost finished the filtering. You can see I had to put uh, some in a bucket, but you can see how clean that is. Like it doesn't, let me just move the camera. You can see how it doesn't have any of the impurities. So I'm almost at the end of decanting all of the dirty oil through the cheesecloth. And you can see now how it's kind of milky. That's because I'm getting down to the bottom where it's all yucky and you've got other bits and pieces in there. So this, this uh, essentially is about six litres of sunflower oil. 
That's a lot that we are saving from going down the sink or in landfill. We're making, making it into something useful, which is soap. So that's about that. So I'm just going to use the spoon to move it. So just to move that oil because it is getting, uh, that last portion was thick or thicker than the other. So just doing that and then letting that drain. I'll come back in about half an hour and that should be all through. Okay, so I finished filtering all the oil. Now what you want to do is just scrape off any last little uh, bits of scraps and just put them over on your uh, paper towel that you're going to compost. So that's that. Now I'm going to take this off. So you can wash this. Uh, you just need to do it with hot water and a strong soap. So that's our oil underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'll just take this off, roll it up so that I don't get grease everywhere. There's a little bit of oil there that I need to clean up, so I'll do that. So the, the other thing I have is stainless steel pegs. The reason I have stainless steel pegs is because when they get oil on them, they're very easy to wash and reuse. The wooden ones, not so much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decant this bucket, uh, which it was just the same oil that I was filtering, but I saw that it got too much. I'm going to tip it back in here. Now you can see that that's a beautiful golden color without any impurities. So getting it all out. And then I'm going to show you the next step. So I want to wipe this spoon that I was using. Just to help me get the last bits of oil out. Okay, so this is about five and a half, five and a half, six litres of oil, of used cooking oil. Now this next step that I do, this is just plain flour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle it on the surface and then let it settle. That might take 12 hours, 24 hours. So it's not in a clear container, which means that I'll have to estimate when it's all the way down the bottom. If you had something clear, I don't have something clear that's large enough, you can tell when the flower's down the bottom. So you can just see, see how it's, that cheesecloth has done its job and filtered the oil. If I wasn't so particular, I could make the soap now from this used oil, but I want it to be extra clean. So what I'm gonna do is put flour on the top. That flour will filter down and will clean the oil some more. So let's do that. I'll just show you. So don't be afraid. Just sprinkle it on the top. It will go down. Just covering it all. Just plain flour, nothing fancy. So it's summer has already started to sink. That's fine. It will capture it all. And so obviously when you don't see the white anymore, it's gone down to the bottom or it's making its way down the bottom. A good thing to do now is to record the time and then you can gauge how long that takes for that flower to go down. Now don't be tempted to touch the surface. You will because you'll be like, oh, that's uneven. Don't touch the surface. Just let it do its thing. Trust the process. Oh, trust the process. Dear oh dear, I sound like a public servant. Okay. I'm not one, by the way. Okay. So that's that. I'll come back when that has all settled down. Okay. So this oil has been resting with the flour settling for four hours. I think that's sufficient. So I'm going to pour it in this bucket here. And at the very bottom, there will be flour. And I want to remain, let that remain in here. And I will make a very quick batch of soap with that flour, but I, I probably won't record it because my purpose is to use the repurposed cooking oil. So I'll do that now and you can see that process. So 
you can see it's very clean. The flower has done its job. You have to keep an eye on it so you can see when the flower appears. I can see the flowers well up the bottom. Just try and not to disrupt it too much. See if I can angle it so you can see it. So I just need to tilt it up. Sorry that I've moved it. But if you look in here, you can see that flower and it's almost a solid. So I can pour the remaining oil off without too much disruption. So I'll just show you that. So you can see that it, it's somewhat separated and I'm going to stop there so I'll just show the camera now it's always tricky doing things on your own so you see that you can see the flower and that oil there I will be able to get more of that oil off if I use another cheesecloth and filter it through um, and so it's just a flower at the bottom, really, which is in solid form, and you can just compost that very easily. Um, so really, that's, that's the clean oil, and that's ready to be used to make into soap. Um, you don't have to use the same quantity that I have, obviously. Um, so that's about, I think, yeah, that's a few kilos there. So I will do a video about how I make this into soap. So the oil that we have cleaned, uh, I'm now going to make it into soap. This is a special order. I'm using these floral molds. You can use a, a loaf mold if you want or any other mold. Uh, th because this is a special order, I'm using those flower molds. This is my essential oil. It's lavender and orange with a little bit of cedar wood. What I'm going to do, and this is Australian white clay. I'm going to mix the white clay with the essential oils because I want to anchor those essential oils, meaning I won't, don't want the smell to dissipate. Uh, hence why I'm mixing the, oops, the white clay. So um, try not to make a mess, but I already have. So it's four and a half teaspoons of white clay. And I'll put the measurements of the essential oil in the description box. So yeah, I have lost about a quarter of a teaspoon that's okay just mixing it up um, now I'm not going to pour the essential oils into the soap mix until I reach trace the reason you don't do that is because you will then saponify the essential oils and you want them to remain as intact as possible and if you put the essential oils in too early to the soap mix uh, you will lose the the benefits I'm just going to try and scoop that mess up no i'm not going to be able to sorry i know it's a bit messy but that's soap making okay so uh, what i'm going to do is now mix the sodium hydroxide here with the uh, sunflower oil that we filtered now this sodium hydroxide it has sodium hydroxide and seawater and i've added another little bit of salt and just dissolving it slowly with the heat also. So I think this is about 55 degrees Celsius. I'll just check it. 53. And the oil's at 16. So what I like to do when I'm using repurposed cooking oil into soap is that I have the stick blender here, but normally I use a whisk because it's likely to trace quickly I want to make sure I don't mix it too fast so what I'm going to do is add the sodium hydroxide lye water into here into the oil mix it then when I get to trace or emulsion I'll add the essential oils mixed with the clay in I wanted to mention that in this oil here the repurposed cooking oil I have added an antioxidant my choice today is vitamin E antioxidant uh, you can use rosemary oleoresin extract, which is also another antioxidant. Um, so one of those two, even grapefruit.
fruit seed extract is an antioxidant. So without further ado, let's, let's mix the, uh, the two major ingredients. I like to get it all out, as you can see. Just a note as well, you can see on the bottom of this ice cream, ice cream container, there's a number five. Only ever use number five plastics if you are, when you're mixing your sodium hydroxide. So it's not getting to trace too quickly, which I like. It means I can control it. I'm going to use the stick blender just quickly on low. see that milky milky consistency is starting a little more swapping out tools that fell out uh, you probably saw that but I'm not going to touch it because the soap's more important right now Okay, at this point, I'm adding in the clay and essential oils. Mix it again. It smells amazing. So it's a mixture of lavender and orange oils, essential oils only. I don't use fragrance oils. That's just a personal choice because I want... Um, my soaps to be all natural. I don't want any synthetics. Okay, it's already starting to thicken, so be really careful here. A little bit more and then I'm going to pour. That is it. The reason why I have to stop is because it will start to thicken and I won't be able to pour it into the moulds. So working quickly. And when you have a bucket, make sure you have the handle upwards so that it doesn't interfere with the pour. If I waited any longer, I'd be in trouble and it would be too thick to pour. I can, you can already see how it is thickening. Even as I pour, it's like a thick custard now. So when you're working with repurposed cooking oil, it's a, um, 
an art as much as it is a science because the oil can be a little uh, unpredictable. Oh, that's some of them are a bit over as you can see. Oops, the daisy. So I'm just moving quickly. I don't have a proper workshop set up, um, so I'm doing this like in the dining room, if you like, um, and it's a little tricky to kind of have the space to dedicate to making soap. I'll get there though. Okay, time to scrape down. What I'm doing now is just ensuring there are no uh, no bubbles. So just getting a chopstick, tapping them in. Oh dear, we had a bit of a blowout there. The tri the camera tripod just uh, touched the uh, one of the molds. I'm so looking forward to having a space that will be dedicated to soap making. <laughs> Okay, so I've just got this spatula here. This is a cake making spatula. There are many, um, many things in soap making, many tools that are actually uh, the same as cake making tools. Spatulas and whisks, stick blenders, etc. So the reason I lined them up as I have is so that I can do this with the moulds and just even out each one. So this one here is looking a bit, oh no, it's fine, looking a bit light. I think I've managed to save it. This one here I don't like. It's not as perfect as I would like. Oops. So I need to in this bucket here where I did the mix, there's still a little bit that I can get out. So that's going to fill that hole there. The thing with making soap is you want to get it to a point and then not touch it anymore. There's just such a temptation to keep like fixing it and tampering with it. So I will let them sit in their moulds for 24 hours, maybe more. The benefit of individual moulds like this is that you don't have to really watch it to see when you can unmould them. Because they're in individual moulds, what that means is you can leave it for a week and not unmould them because it's not going to be that you can't cut them. They are in their own little kind of, portion so it doesn't matter how long you wait before you unmold it so just unmolding these soaps these are the ones made with repurposed cooking oil so it is now two days later so 48 hours later than when i poured it they take a little bit longer because they're made with 100 percent sunflower oil that's why there's um, I, I don't take them out straight away uh, what i mean straight away i mean like the normal curing time about 24 hours So I like these flower moulds because um, there's six moulds and they're different flowers. So a couple of air bubbles there, but nothing, nothing to write home about. Unmoulding is one of my favourite parts of soap making, unmoulding and cutting. bit of tape so once they're like in a couple of days or so what I'll do is I'll kind of come back and trim all the edges uh, but I just want to make them um, kind of as firm as possible. I don't want to 
handle them too much because they are they're firm enough to take out of their molds but they are do have a little bit of softness as well I put white clay in these ones so there's white clay and then they're fragranced with essential oils of lavender and orange <coughs> which is good So this is actually an order for Christmas. Um, so someone's ordered the 50 soaps. So I have another batch of these to make. The lavender and orange is actually quite a good mix. So you have an orange as a top note and then lavender as a middle note. Okay, just making them a little bit more even on the card here. Okay. I'll just show you what they look like. 